first film that comes to any horror fan's mind when thinking about meta-horror will surely be Scream. But beyond that, there's a whole range of great movies that fit the criteria for a self-aware horror experience. With wink and nod references to genre tropes and classics, self-referencing stories and usually a hefty dose of satire, these self-aware horrors are sure to offer you something new, made of all the old faithfuls. I'm Amy from What Culture, and let's take a look at the 10 best self-aware horrors. 10. The Wolf of Snow Hollow Set in a quiet, snowy town where nothing much happens, this film shows the local police force trying to deal with a string of gruesome murders unlike anything they've seen before. The killings appear to be the work of a large animal, or some people even say a werewolf. There's just one problem, however. In the words of our central sheriff's deputy, there's no such thing as werewolves. The film is acutely aware of how silly it is, with exaggerated, endearing, towny-type characters and schlocky, blood-stained paw prints in the snow. Its editing follows along with exactly how you think a tacky horror movie would play out, introducing victims, then killing them off with the mysterious off-screen violence and silhouette shadows. Quaint cabins full of animal pelts and warm fires and an outdated small-town station create the perfect backdrop for this fun flick. A love letter of sorts to all snowy slashes of old, this film is certainly worth a watch when taken with a pinch of salt and a warming cup of cocoa. 9. The Final Girls You'll just have to hear me out on this one because it is exactly as campy as it sounds, but given the fact the story is literally about audiences being sucked into a movie they're watching, it was too good a fit not to feature on this list. When a group of friends step through the screen at a movie theatre to escape a fire encapsulating the building, they find themselves sucked into the movie they'd just been watching minutes earlier. They know the plot, they know the tropes, and by that logic, they should know how to survive, right? Using well-known cliches of 80s horror classics to guide them, the group attempt to save themselves and the cast of the film. As weird as the phrase feel-good horror is, this definitely counts as one. Everything from the bright colours to the comedic slasher deaths give this film a definite spring in its step. There are plenty of examples out there of media paying tribute to the 80s era of horror, but this is amongst some of the better ones. 8. Little Monsters This 2019 Australian horror offering has charm in abundance, but you could probably just guess that already by by seeing that it features Lupita Nyong'o in one of the main roles. Another entry to the zombie comedy category, this film offers up an idea I've certainly never seen before, a zombie outbreak at a farm from the perspective of a group of kindergarten school trippers. Nyong'o stars as the kindergarten teacher, simply trying her best to make sure all the kids survive and think that what's happening is just a game, all the while dealing with the chaotic volunteer chaperone Dave and the child-hating kids TV star Teddy McGiggles. With with a scenario like that, there's no way the film couldn't capitalise off its own ridiculousness. There are pop culture references, self-referential gags, and some trademark Josh Gad loud mouthery. The characters are endearing and well-performed, and amongst all the comedy, there are some genuinely heartfelt moments. At only 94 minutes long, this concise but well-delivered movie certainly packs its own kind of punch. 7. Shaun of the Dead If you haven't seen Shaun of the Dead by now, then what the hell have you been doing? First coming out in 2004, this beloved bit of Edgar Wright goodness has only aged like a fine wine. The first instalment in the Cornetto trilogy, this film features Simon Pegg and Nick Frost on the front line, demonstrating their ever-impressive chemistry together on screen. The film follows Shaun, a washed-up salesman with his life going nowhere, as he suddenly has to confront a zombie outbreak consuming his community. Eager to protect his housemate, girlfriend and mum, he sets out on a mission to get everyone together and safe before just just waiting for it to all blow over. The editing, the comic timing, and the overall delivery make this the very best zom rom com out there. It takes everything you know about the average reaction to a terrifying zombie apocalypse and turns it on its head, with Sean, a pint in hand, winking at you from the screen knowingly. It's a great example of a film that knew exactly what the genre had to offer and decided to offer more, earning itself a legacy that still stands strong over a decade and a half later. Six. The Cabin in the Woods By now, everyone has heard of The Cabin in the Woods and is at least vaguely aware of what it's about, even if you've only ever seen the elevator scene. But then again, what scene could possibly sum up the film in a better way? A group of friends take a trip to a woodland cabin, completely unaware that their experiences are being controlled by a group of scientists. Seemingly random items in the basement are connected to different monsters that may attack the group, and after selecting an old diary and reading from it, a family of redneck zombies rise up from the ground. The scientists 
goal is to sacrifice all of the friends, each of them representing a horror movie archetype right through from the fool and the whore to the virgin. Whilst knowing the tropes will do these characters no good, it's fun for audiences to be able to spot all the little references and easter eggs, especially in that famous elevator scene where everyone pauses to take a long look at all the potential monsters the friends could have faced. 5. Spree People are immediately on board for this film as soon as they see Stranger Things' Joe Keery as its main face. This isn't even necessarily a bad thing because he is, of course, about as charming as ever. Spree follows an unhinged driver for a rideshare app that shares its name with the film's title. Obsessed with gaining followers and becoming big online, he decides to start carrying out a series of murders, picking up new victims through the app. He livestreams his kills to a skeptical audience, escalating things as time goes goes on and his desperation becomes clearer. It's not a complex film and the main character isn't some traumatised, complicated psycho. It's more of a satirical commentary on the world's view of social media and those that use it. In a world where some people genuinely believe that wanting followers on TikTok will turn you into a deranged criminal someday, this movie pokes fun at just how silly that concern can be and the kind of satire that comes out of it. It's a critique of a critique, if you will. Collider called it American Psycho for the Digital Age. Age. And whilst I don't think it's necessarily that deep, I think that's quite a nice summary. It's a hyperbolic, bloody representation of the internet obsessed, with a sprinkling of dark comedy and light horror. 4. Behind the Mask – The Rise of Leslie Vernon This film definitely is something out of the ordinary, using a mockumentary style to give us an insight into a murderer's planning stage. Journalist Taylor Gentry is documenting the preparations of Leslie Vernon, a killer whose next plot is to murder a group of teenagers in a rigged-up house. Vernon details his plans to Taylor as to what he thinks the victims will do, what he has to put in place to hinder them, and what the final outcome will be, all based on famous horror movies of the past. As as the day of the murder approaches, Taylor and her crew develop a bit of a conscience and try to get Leslie to reconsider his killing spree, but they could never anticipate what comes next for them. The style alone is enough to encourage a bit of interest, and later on this premise gives way to an unexpected ending keeping in line with the true spirit of the slasher bait and switch. 3. One Cut of the Dead This low-budget Japanese zombie horror surprised everyone when it came out in 2017, not least because of its originality but how they managed to make such a quality movie with the equivalent of only $25,000. Essentially split into three narrative parts, the film takes us on a roller coaster of emotions and understanding. At an old water filtration plant, a crew are shooting a zombie movie called One Cut of the Dead. Their shoot, however, is interrupted when a real zombie apocalypse breaks out. Now I know, I know, this all seems very familiar and you've seen it all before, but trust me, you haven't. This movie within a movie movie is a perfect mix of familiar and refreshing, playing on tropes you know from a million movies before it and twisting them to the advantage of a very excited on-screen director. What we see in the first act becomes clearer and funnier in the second act, and this is all just amplified for the third. I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but with a stunning 100% certified fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, surely it's got to be doing something right. 2. I Blame Society With a title like I Blame Society, you know that this movie is going to have something to say about the world it exists in and the environment it grew from, but this film manages to give us commentary without the clumsy, heavy-handedness we sometimes expect from society critiquing cinema. Following an aspiring filmmaker, Gillian, who, to put it bluntly, just isn't very good, I Blame Society sees her descent into apathy and delusion as she escalates her criminal status in the name of movie making. In a world where Hollywood is more interested in the buzzwords than the meaning behind them, Gillian wants her murder documentary to show complete authenticity and she's willing to go to any length to achieve that. Gillian Wallace Horvat is convincing and even a little bit endearing as the awkward, unhinged main girl, and the self-filmed style lends the film a feeling of reality and even intimacy in certain contexts. It's a film that knows that the main character and her arc are ridiculous, but instead of half-heartedly hinting at lunacy, see it leans into it, and the result is definitely unique and interesting. The film is slow to start off with, but it's definitely worth seeing through to the end, and it's very fitting finale. 1. 
Funny Games, 1997. To finish off this list, we are taking a hard left on tone. Where earlier we mentioned feel-good horrors, this is a feel-bad horror. This is a feel-terrible horror. This is a oh god he's breaking the fourth wall and I don't want to be part of it horror. A family is taken hostage in their house by two men, Paul and Peter, and forced to engage in a series of sadistic games. With all the usual back and forth you'd expect from a kidnap and torture based film, this one is uncomfortable and unnerving in equal measures. What makes it stand out, however, is that the two antagonists frequently reference cinematic ideas and even look at and speak to the audience. Whilst Peter seems unaware he's in a film, Paul gives the audience the occasional wink and nod, both literally and figuratively. The film is packed full of horror conventions, red herrings, references to cinematic tension, killing beloved family pets, etc. The film's self-referential nature when choosing to extend its own runtime or retake its own scenes plays into the director's plans for audience immersion. The director even went on to write an essay titled Violence and the Media, in which he discusses the film as being violent, visceral, and otherwise completely devoid of plot. Essentially, this film is an elite brand of self-aware because it wants to make us self-aware too, considering that we're consuming horrible films because we're complicit in normalising violence. We're watching bad things and we should feel bad about it. Yikes. But with that, we've reached the end of this list of the 10 best self-aware horrors. If you've got any more you would have added to the list, then let us know in the comments down below. And remember to check out whatculture.com for more lists and articles like this every single day. I've been Amy from What Culture, and I'll catch you next time.